The Entertainment Software Rating Board has rated Manhunt 2 M for mature, meaning no one under 17 should be allowed to play or buy it. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most controversial products ever. We're asking them to be good corporate partners and just stop selling this junk because our kids shop in Urban Outfitters. For this list, we're looking at some of the most scandalous items to have ever been sold and seeing just what made them so problematic. Have you ever owned any controversial products? Let us know about it below. Number 10. Gilbert U-238 Atomic Energy Lab For some reason in 1950, toy manufacturers, the A.C. Gilbert Company, thought it was a swell idea for kids to play with radioactive substances in the name of science. The purpose of their U-238 Atomic Energy Lab was for young ones to witness nuclear and chemical reactions. Now you might be wondering if the set came with a radiation suit. No, it did not. The machine emits radiation that triggers mutation in ordinary human beings. But it did come with a battery-powered Geiger counter, so the child would know how much radiation they're absorbing. The four radioactive ore samples were all sources of low-level uranium, the substance often used in nuclear weaponry. You can use either the alpha beta or gamma sources, or you can use one of the four uranium ores that come with the kit. But the samples were in glass jars, so probably fine? Originally, the toy was sold for $49.50. That would be over $600 today. Number 9. Adidas Shackle Sneakers German sportswear company Adidas planned to release brand new sneakers, the JS Roundhouse Mids, back in 2012. One advertisement had the option, got a sneaker game so hot you lock your kicks to your ankles? Well, you can only assume the PR department had an off day when this product got through. I just can't get with the shackles. The sneakers, designed by Jeremy Scott, came with shackles. Bright orange rubber ones. While they were going with a distasteful prison theme, instead they instantly drew the anger of consumers with comparisons to slavery. Adidas soon experienced further embarrassment when new sites began running stories on the sneakers. With all the backlash, Adidas withdrew the shoes from sale before they even came out. Number 8. Disney's Moana Costume Whenever a new Disney film is released, you can bet shops will be filled with costumes of the characters come Halloween. But when the film heavily represents a particular culture, merchandise makers can miss the mark and instead offend the culture with appropriation. And for 2016's Moana, that was exactly what happened. Prior to the film's release, Disney signed off on a $45 full-body suit costume of the demigod Maui, complete with brown skin and traditional Polynesian tattoos. Actually, Maui shapeshifter demigod of the wind and sea, hero of men. Many people accuse Disney of promoting stereotypes and encouraging children to don brown face. Use it as a teaching moment. If they love the character, then... You know, let them learn about it. With all the criticism, the House of Mouse apologized and withdrew the costume from shops and their website. Sometimes, who we wish we were, what we wish we could do, it's just not meant to be. Number 7. Bud Light Bottle As part of their hashtag Up For Whatever campaign, Bud Light had various messages sprawled on the labels of their bottles. With upwards of 140 messages, they were meant to encourage spontaneous fun. So if I gave you a Bud Light, are you up for whatever happens next? But one statement in particular didn't go down well, like, at all. It read, the perfect beer for removing no from your vocabulary for the night. Huge yikes. People were livid with such a statement that suggests promoting assault. Alex Lambrecht, the vice president of Anheuser-Busch Brewing Company, released a statement saying they made a mistake and definitely didn't condone such a message. Consumers created petitions to have the label pulled, and social media erupted with hashtag up for consent. The offending message was quickly pulled from circulation in the aftermath. Number 6. Manhunt Every so often, a video game comes along that really riles people up. And in this instance, it might be justified. When Manhunt came out in 2003, the media jumped all over it with its graphic depictions of violence as the plot involves slaying people in over-the-top fashions. It is some of the most horrific, senselessly violent stuff you've ever seen. In 2004, the game was linked to the murder of 14-year-old Stefan Pakira in England. The culprit, 17-year-old Warren LeBlanc, was stated to have been obsessed with Manhunt. 
The police denied the link, but that didn't stop later disbarred attorney Jack Thompson from using the story as proof that violent video games are evil. Many shops began pulling the game from sale with the controversy. This problem continued in 2007 with the sequel, Manhunt 2. So the Wii has motion sensing controls, and therefore to stab, you're going to mimic a stabbing motion. To swing a sledgehammer or a shovel, you would do the same. Number 5. Most Products Gwyneth Paltrow Sells Since Goop was founded by actor Gwyneth Paltrow in 2008, the company has regularly drawn attention for unusual, expensive, and pseudoscientific products and treatments. In 2017, Goop was sued in California over deceptive health claims and settled out of courts. There's also this $1,900 rose quartz checker set for when you want to say, I'm rich, but I'm also too dumb to play chess. In 2020, there was a lot of drama with the infamous candle that was sold as smelling like, well, certain area. Well, the candle is called This Smells Like My Vagina. (laughs) Originally costing $75, the candle soon found its way onto eBay with a $250 price tag. Goop also upset people with the cost of their products. At the time of writing, they have a programmable message board for $3,244 and a carry-on suitcase for $8,340. This sort of pricing has resulted in accusations that Paltrow and Goop are out of touch with the average consumer, something that the actor has denied. Number 4. Harry Potter's Broomstick As is typical with films targeted toward children, there's going to be lots and lots of merchandise. Wow, look at it! The new Nimbus 2000! It's the fastest model yet! Upon the release of 2001's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the toy company Mattel thought they'd sell a replica Nimbus 2000. But it wasn't just kids adding the broom to their wish list. It was also women. You see, this toy was created to be ridden so you can pretend to be whizzing through the air on a broomstick. For that authenticity, they made the broom vibrate. And it vibrates, so it's a whooshing sound and it vibrates. So you put it between your legs and you press this. Yep, you can see why it was popular. It's not just a broomstick, Harry. It's a Nimbus 2000. Amazon was flooded with jokey reviews from mothers saying how much they love the toy. There were even reports that adult shops began selling the broomstick due to high demand. Merry Christmas! Number 3. Peachy Head Shampoo by Urban Outfitters Urban Outfitters seems to really lean into the mantra that controversy creates cash. After all, there must be a reason they've developed a reputation for selling controversial products over the years. This product line is simply ridiculous. It's a line of merchandise which includes these shot glasses, coasters, and other items that resemble prescription pill bottles. And in 2016, it was a shampoo that drew bad publicity. The bottle, made by manufacturers Anatomicals, states it's for, well, we can't use the exact word, but really depressed hair. To make matters worse, the name Peachy Head is a reference to a beachy head, a hotspot area in the UK where people have been known to take their own lives. Even the product's description uses distasteful puns following a similar theme and includes an uncomfortable image. With the justified backlash from offended consumers, the grim product was pulled. Number 2. The Cabbage Patch Snack Time Kid In the mid-90s, the hot toy was the fancy Cabbage Patch Snack Time Kid. What made this toy unique was that it could eat. Sort of. My cabbage patch snack time kid, she really loves to snack. Wow, she really chews. The doll came with plastic food. When placed in the toy's mouth, the fake food would be dragged back with a mechanical jaw and into the doll's backpack. However, the snack time kid didn't differentiate between what it can and can't eat. Several children had their hair consumed by the toy, painfully pulling on their scalp. After it got the battery, I had to see if I could, you know, push a button or something, a lever, and pull the hair back through. But as the hair went in, it it intertwined into the gear, and then you couldn't get it out. Other owners complained that they suffered finger injuries. Reportedly, around 100 kids had some form of injury. So Mattel, the manufacturers, announced that they were withdrawing the dowel and offered a $40 refund. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Urban Outfitters Kent State Sweatshirt Yep, Urban Outfitters reels its inappropriate head once again with a fashion item. What they're doing is celebrating 
negatively a very terrible tragedy that occurred on our campus. In 2014, they thought it was a good idea to sell a vintage Kent State University sweatshirt complete with what appeared to be bullet holes and blood stains. This item evoked the massacre at the campus by the Ohio National Guard in 1970 that had four fatalities during an anti-war protest. The company eventually withdrew the sweatshirt, but they claimed the blood stains were discoloration and the bullet holes were from wear and fray. People know about it because it was such a big part of our history and it shouldn't be portrayed like that at all. Only one year later, in 2015, Urban Outfitters had another scandal. A striped tapestry with a pink triangle was compared to the outfits gay men were forced to wear in concentration camps in World War II. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.